from, from Screen Shelf. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of From Screen to Shelf. This is our 48th episode. We are two yeah. episodes away mm-hmm. from episode 50. So thank you, everybody, who has uh, stuck with us so far for this uh, amazing, weird, interesting journey that we've been on on the channel here. Uh, but today, or, or should I should say this episode marks the first episode of October. Right, Chase, if I'm Ooh. Yeah, not mistaken? Yeah, come out the first October 1st, our our timing is impeccable. So with that episode, yeah, it's like clockwork, right? So Mm -hmm. we were thinking of ideas for topics to discuss, and we came up with something that I don't think we've really talked about before. We've talked about it with each other, um, you know, amongst ourselves, but never on uh, on camera or on live or anything like that or, or on recording. So we wanted to kind of go through our watch lists for October, our annual watch list. So this is pretty much movies that we watch almost every year. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got them. Everybody has those lists. You know, we try to mix it up every October. Like I'm sure a lot of people do. A lot of people listening probably will. But there's there's certain movies that I think everybody revisits each year, whether it's a, a comfort thing or a nostalgia or whatever your reasoning is, you know, whether you grew up with it, watching it every year, you know, tradition. Uh, we all have certain movies that we revisit each year. Uh, and we wanted to kind of get into those with each other and kind of talk about them and, and talk about our reasons why we uh, revisit them each year. Now, some of these movies are could be considered classics. We all picked a handful of movies. And I think we each have like one or two honorable mentions that we're going to throw out there. But yeah. This is pretty much going to be anything's up for grabs here. I mean, specifically, probably having to do with the horror genre. I don't know what you guys picked. Most of mine are within the horror genre, seeing as these are like spooky season picks, so to speak. So we'll get right. I into thought we were book. doing My Little Pony ranking. I had to like my My Little Pony ranking. <laughs> oh, here yeah. ready to go. Messed episodes, the tier I messed everything up. Yeah. My bad, guys. <laughs> oh, man. OK, we're going to have to come back and do a different episode and give <laughs> yeah, Gabe okay. a chance to watch the yeah. movies. Another week off, guys. Yeah. <laughs> he actually picked his his five movies are actually uh, all Christopher Nolan films. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oppenheimer is a scary movie, right? It's kind of scary when you think <laughs> scary about it. Think about it's it. scary for some people. Yeah, it's scary when you think about how the audio came out for sure. Oh, fuck you. Man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So we each have a handful of picks that we're going to talk about here. So I don't know who wants to kick this off. Um, Chase, Gabe, one of you guys want to uh, start us off here. Do you? What do we want to do? We want to go one at a time. We'll go in rotation, like one person. Yeah, one honorable at a time. Mentions around. Yeah. Oh yeah, the honorable mentions. We, we can just kind of do the honorable those. mentions first. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds yeah. Good. So I can go ahead and start that off. Get the blood pumping and and the yeah. the wheels greased. Um I kind of laughed when you said one to two honorable mentions, man, cuz there's no way in hell you know my you list. Yeah, I think I have like several. four, right? Cuz we're doing Cause just several. a preface. We're doing five, right? We're doing top yeah. five like annual yeah. rewatches. Yeah, five so the rest must are just, watches. Yeah, so the rest are just honorable mentions. Yeah. Um so one of the ones that didn't make my list cuz I I tried to make my um uh, five something like I might be introducing you to something or maybe just touching base and going a little bit deeper into something else. Um, but there's just some absolute timeless classics that some of these I've been watching for 10, 15 years every year. Mm. Um, some of them probably just made into the rotation in the last five, but some of these I have been watching in about 10 years or so, but that's going to be Friday the 13th part two. If I don't do a Friday rewatch, I always get to part two and that Paramount scare set is coming out this upcoming Tuesday, the day that this episode drops, you should have it in your hands if you pre-ordered it. Um, so I'm excited. So I'll definitely be kicking off the spooky season by watching that. Evil Dead 2013. Now, that's not just exclusive to Halloween. Sometimes I just get the urge to just watch it in the middle of May or something like mm-hmm. that. So um, that one's always there. Trick or Treat, 
That one's another one that's getting a 4K towards the end of the year, which I hope it comes in on time. If it doesn't, I will. Dude, be it's so at the upset. end of the month, which pisses it's me off. It's the end of the month. month. It's like yeah, no one's going to get in time for yeah. Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be a miracle be if you that. did. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope they catapult it from the UK and it just perfectly lands <laughs> right here on the 29th. Um, mm. Psycho mm. 2. That is mm. a uh, one of my favorites. I actually, to a degree, I think they're both masterpieces. I actually think the second one's more fun and rewatchable um Mm. for what it is it's a lot more nuts to butts i guess you could say it just goes you know it doesn't have like that 45 minute build up and stuff so i think that was just a good passive fun time um the town that dreaded sundown is another one Mm. i that's probably one of the more recent ones i watched that great yeah like last september or not last september as in 2024 but 2023 it's made it into its rotation absolutely incredible and slumber party Can I ask you, uh, Town the Dreaded Sundown, which version is it? Because I know they I think they're had both a, great, man. Yeah, they had a remake as well, which is yeah. honestly they're both pretty good, like you said. So yeah, yeah. I, I think pick. that has to be the best, like homage to an original, not done by the original director. Mm. Um, so for those that don't know, just go on a quick spiel and pad runtime because that's what we do around here. But um, <laughs> so the original Town that Dreaded Sundown is kind of takes a lot of homages from Texas Chainsaw came out about a year or two later. And um, it's about some real life murders on the border of Texarkana of the Texas Arkansas border and stuff. So um, what is he called? The Phantom, I believe is what his name is in the, yeah, in the, movie. the Phantom Killer, I think. Yeah. And so he he is what inspired Baghead Jason from Friday the 13th Part 2. That's what made me check it out when I found that out. Um, so it's actually shot like a documentary about what's going on in the town. And then the second one, which is no spoilers for the second one, it's, uh, it's a requel. So it kind of reboots and it's a sequel, but the original one is used as a documentary for the town of Texarkana while there's these imitation killings going on because they never caught or, you know, um, it's based off a real life case from the forties to the sixties. I want to say went on about 20 years. Um, so definitely check that one out if you're a huge Friday the 13th fan and if especially if you're a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's got a lot of those vibes in it. So definitely check that one out. Um, that one is done. Um, the new one is done by Alfonso Gomez Rehan. Um, and it's just really, really, really good. The original one is hold on. I have it up right here. Charles B. Pierce. And that one came out in 1976. So two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, or not $2 million, uh, two years after Texas Chainsaw. So, yeah, that would be my honorable six or five. However many <laughs> so it's like his honorable mentions list is longer than the actual list. That <laughs> I couldn't, <bro. laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, That's I awesome. couldn't, man. I had to. That's good. Oh, man. Let me see. I think I got the right list up now. I, I okay. took off the, my, my little pony's gone, so uh let's see yeah some of these are hard dude because it's like i i would totally put these on my top five but it's just i think with the with this list that we're going to be doing it's just more so more festive like more horror kind of holiday like halloween kind of stuff so that, that's why some of these didn't yeah. make it but the first one i had here was actually one we've talked about quite a bit is, is the bada duke i actually love the bada duke yeah I like think it's, it's one of so the 2010s it's freaking it's a great mm-hmm. movie i just never really I, I i watch it every october but it's never like on the forefront of my mind to watch it like right away it's a great movie yeah but yeah. it's never on the, on the forefront of my mind um i got oh it's october i gotta put it in yeah exactly yeah. um this one is interesting dude it's one that i don't think a lot of people talk about or maybe they have and uh, i've just been kept out of the conversation exorcism of emily rose that's actually yeah, one I Scott really, Derrickson. really. Oh, dude, I one love my favorite that movie. courtroom dramas too, man. Yeah, well, I, it probably is my favorite courtroom outside of uh, Twelve Angry Men. Um, yeah. it's it's a really good. I mean, the, the horror scenes are like fantastic. Like, I think that yeah. they actually did a really good job with that movie. Scott um, Derrickson, shout out Seven. Now, this uh, it's that this is more kind of like mm. a thriller, thriller suspense, but there's so many horror elements to it too, with especially mm. with the way he murders people. Um, that's always one I try to get around to um the others with nicole kidman i saw that they had the criteria yeah, i remember last year I, you're a big fan of that's oh, dude, i love that movie that's my spooky haunted house movie for sure i always try to get mm-hmm. to the others um and this one's crazy it didn't reach my like my festive top five um the shining interesting um, yeah like i love the shining yeah but there's just it's it doesn't reach like that level of like we're gonna watch this like this is you know a Halloween yeah. movie like this is a must, but I mean, I love I love The Shining. It's a great freaking movie. And I so think let that's me ask it. you this, Gabe. Yeah, because um, there was actually one that um, it's it's actually in my top ten movies of all time is the original Gremlins. 
There's sometimes mm. I'll watch it in Halloween, but I usually watch it in Christmas. Do you do the same thing with The Shining? I have watched The Shining during Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. have. And it, it well, it's yeah. just that whole snow element to it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it just kind of makes it. Yeah, and and for yeah. some reason, I think there's that weird like dichotomy with like Christmas, where it's like you kind of want to watch like a horror movie during Christmas. I mean, like yeah. I mean, we've talked about a whole bunch of like Christmas horror movies here before. Yeah, we did a video on it. So like, for it's. Sure it's it's that weird dichotomy that comes into play but for sure i've, I've seen the shining during uh the christmas season mm -hmm. no guilt yeah. about it what about you will honorable mentions man before we get to the official list yeah well i had two but seeing as you guys added a few more i'll i'll, I'll throw some more out there so well, name let me show shelf. you yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you guys got like 45 minutes yeah. to an hour <laughs> no well I'll, I'll say this though um with me, like I, I try to start off, I actually start watching some movies to kind of get me in the spirit of things in, I want to say mid September, you know? Same. So I have like end of summer movies that I like to watch. Mm -hmm. One of those I'll throw out there, Chase. I think you'll appreciate this. It's summer of 84. Let's go. Yes. Because what I like to do is kind of transition from like late summer. Cause like I always get those vibes around late summer when I hear about, you know, the stores start carrying like Halloween items and stuff like yeah. that. You start seeing candy pop up in like Walmarts and targets and stuff like that on the big box stores. So I always try to start with like late summer films that like kind of take place around that time of year and then kind of work my way into fall. So I want to say summer of 84 cause that's just a great, I mean, anybody that hasn't seen this movie, Chase and I have talked about it before. Chase, it I don't really need more. You love. did a review of this on the channel. I just I think. did a like, "Hey, go watch this fucking movie right now" type yeah. of video. <laughs> like, it, it's a fantastic really movie. I mean, it, it's got Maybe that like it. it's that eighties vibe of like you know, the kids trying to like yeah, movies like the Goonies. It, it has like elements from like movies like the Monster Squad too. Like those, just that eighties theme of like kids that are trying to take down. Um, you know, uh, whether it's a supernatural force in this case, it's a serial killer, you know, but whatever the antagonist is in the film, you know, the kids are trying to take it down. And it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, a, it's the focal point of the film is on the kids and, and their interactions, yeah. you know, with this guy that everybody, or at least they think is a killer. Um, mm -hmm. and it kind of treads that line for most of the movie, but the vibe is just so, so it's like the crazy. perfect vibe for like this time of year, you know? Yeah. Um, as the seasons and, are changing and stuff. Yeah. Well, I know you guys are dealing with summer weather still, but uh I, I am 90 I, degrees. I, I've I've been Dude. dealing with like more fall it's still summer you know, type <laughs> weather here. Yeah. Yeah. So still summer here, man. Uh I, I it's still a good time of year to watch it. So that's one of my honorable mentions. I, I try to get to it every year, but usually it's not necessarily in October. It's more like late August, like through mid September when I try to watch that. So that's one of them. Uh the other one I'll throw out. Chase, you mentioned Friday the 13th Part 2. I actually try to watch Part 4 every year. And you guys know we we did mm -hmm. our uh, yeah, Friday the 13th. We did the 1 yeah. through 4 video. That's my favorite out of those original four. So even if I don't get to the other three, which I don't really every year, but I always <laughs> try to watch four. Because four, I yeah. think, is... I don't think it's the most technically well made out of the four of those as we talked about, but I think four is just so much fun. It's just my yeah, favorite. Right. I, I think it's just the culmination of those first four movies. It's like an interesting part and, and just an integral part of that franchise and everything kind of changed after four. So four, I think for me is like the last, not that the other ones aren't fun, you know, and for those of you mm -hmm. that are listening or watching this, you guys can watch our, you know, one through four vid that's available on the channel, as well as our discussion on five through eight. So we we talk a little bit in more detail about those. So, you know, feel free to check those videos out. But yeah, man, four for me is uh, my favorite out of those originals. So I always try to watch that again uh, anytime between like late August uh, through September. Um, and they're yeah. just good movies, man. I think I think the atmosphere in four is really great. And it, it's the same thing with Summer of eighty four. They just have like a tone to them that just perfectly solidifies like this time of year. You know, and there's actually that whole theme, if I could backtrack to Summer of eighty four, it, it one of the big themes of the movie is like the end of summer. Mm -hmm. You know, the culmination of that story is, you know, once everything happens, once you reach the climax. Uh, you know, they talk about people moving away and whatnot. So that's a big theme that was very prevalent, uh, I should say prevalent in the, a lot of those eighties movies as well. So summer of 84, big shout out to that one. Friday, the 13th, part four, 
two of my honorable mentions. So I'll get to one that I actually grabbed off the shelf. And this is one that I do watch in October. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if it's a movie that you guys have seen. It might be a movie that not a lot of people are expecting, but it's uh, Haxon. Which is oh hell yeah! I need to get to I've that. Never That's seen on that. the list. Yeah, it's a 1920s so horror movie. It's yeah, nineteen twenty. Oh, silent did you, yeah, you brought this up before, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's actually nineteen twenty two. This was released. So, for those of you that are interested, it's available uh, on Blu Ray on from Tubi. Criterion. Yep, it's on Tubi oh, as well. Sure. If you guys want to check it out, um, but I believe Radiance is actually putting out uh, a deluxe LE of this uh, at the on end of the month. Mm. I don't or know if it's 4K. I think it might be Blu-ray, but we can we can confirm that. I don't know if I you can you. pull that up real quick, yep. Chase. Yep. But yeah, this is a movie that, dude. It's got it, it's uh this, this Criterion one's a 2K restoration, and this has been available for a while, but it's a silent film, uh, and it pretty much just kind of explores the relationship between the witches of the Middle Ages, and it, it kind of questions whether or not the things that they were dealing with were, you know, it was a because of mental illness or if it was in fact uh, due to, you know, satanic packs with the devil. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's dark, it's humorous. It's got like some comedy elements to it, which I think are great, but it's a silent film. So like for me, even if I'm not paying close attention to it, I, I try to watch it every watch. year, but yeah. it's, it's cool to just put on in the background. The imagery in this movie is like, second to none for films yeah. of its time i mean it's there's some like iconic shots in this movie that you may have seen elsewhere in fact a lot of them have been used for uh some other purposes in fact this is like a random tidbit but i remember seeing uh rob zombie and alice cooper like several years ago live and i was always kind of fascinated by their stage show because like you know alice cooper is like considered like the best shock rocker of all time you know and mm -hmm. rob zombie i guess has kind of followed in his footsteps but i always noticed that the thing with rob zombie is he always has like these samples of uh, videos and edited from like horror movies as his backdrops and haxon he takes a lot of stuff or at least at the time when i saw his live show he took a lot of footage from this movie and kind of uh recycled it into his uh his whole stage show so that's awesome. And ever since then, I was like, well, what is that from? You know, because I could recognize some of the movies. Um, like mm -hmm. he sampled like the Monsters TV show. He's like, and for those of you that are like Rob Zombie fans out there, I'm not the biggest fans of his of his film. You know, his, his films music. are not, uh, you know, the best. I think The Devil's Rejects is probably his high point. But yeah, he he recycles a lot of this old horror footage from, from these movies. Um, this one in particular. But for the longest time, I was trying to find out what it was. And... You know, when I first watched this movie, I was like, oh, there it is. But this yeah. is a great movie. I, I think it it captures a lot of that imagery very well. Um, you know, just dealing with witchcraft, you know, possession, you know, satanic themes. Uh, it's just great. It's a great watch. It, and again, I, I think if you're not into silent movies, you're probably not going to be too into it. But I would recommend yeah. checking it out. I think it's one of the best films of the silent era of that time yeah. period so mm. highly recommend that this one. but yeah that's another honorable mention uh well i got your so. answer as well so that le is a 2k scan on bd from it is it's okay yeah yeah um but i also did want to ride your coattails on that it this isn't necessarily something i watch every year i actually just got to it um terror vision dropped it um mm -hmm. but if you watch that and you want to follow it up with something that i would i would gush about it just like how you did will is dante's yeah. inferno from 1911 oh yeah dante's wild. Mm. yeah that's crazy how they yeah. did that shit in 1911 just still it's just and, eye candy yeah and terrorvision they that's a blu-ray they put that out on right yeah and it looks their blu-rays are some of the best you yeah, know they do just like vinegar work. syndrome yeah, shout out Terror Vision. About, we had an interview with Brad from Terror Vision. That's also available on the channel. We're, we're just plugging all our videos today, folks. So. Yeah, all of them. check out all of them. Just get like check 150. that out. <laughs> but Terror Vision, they, they do fantastic work. But yeah, that's going to be it for my honorable mentions, guys. I only wanted I wanted to stick with a handful. I was only going to mention Haxon, but I wanted to throw yeah. a couple more in there since you guys uh, since you guys added some. But uh, you know, if I wanted to do one more, it'd probably be Halloween 3. Because I do try to watch it every year, but we've talked about that movie, you know, so many times so many now, times. it seems. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't want to beat a dead horse. So do you want to go ahead and talk about your number five while you're already going? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so my number five. And I already kind of showed off the steel book and chase. I think you and I talked about this. I, it was in my steel book, uh, ranking. It's one of my favorite steel books that shout has, uh, or scream factories put out, but it's pumpkin head. Oh, I I I remember that. So, And this is the thing, like, it's funny because this isn't one of my favorite horror movies at all, just but fun. for some reason, I, I still just love this movie. Um, yeah. I, I think Lance Hendrickson is just fantastic in this. Mm-hmm. I just love the vibe of this movie. I think even though the, the movie isn't perfect by any means, I, it's still a solid horror movie. It's not my favorite, as I said, but I think what it does do incredibly well is the vibe, just the atmosphere in this film is yeah is top notch. And that's part of why I think I watch it every year, because uh, it's one of those movies that just kind of gets me into that, you know, spirit of Halloween, spirit mm-hmm. of autumn, fall. You know, it's just it's so well done. They just killed it with the atmosphere in this movie. So, yeah, Pumpkinhead is going to be my number five. So it's available on 4K from Scream Factory. Uh, there's a Blu-ray as well. So I don't know if the Steelbook is still available. You can probably buy this slipcover uh for a, a decent price but i would recommend checking this out i mean pumpkin head I'm, I'm sure everybody's probably seen this by now mm-hmm. um gabe have you seen it yeah i saw it i actually picked it up at a uh, okay. zia records here i think it was like a few months after oh, you nice. talked about the steel book yeah they had it at zia records and they had the steel yeah, book the on steel zia book records too i didn't so get the steel book <laughs> the steel book is but so it's, it's a dope pretty. steel book yeah but they were selling they're starting yeah. to catch on. Like when I first went to Zia Records, like they were like kind of like oblivious to kind of like steelbook pricing almost. So they just throw steelbooks on the shelves and kind mm. of forget about it. But now it's like <laughs> the, the no prices price are reflective, yeah, <laughs> of what they're yeah. going for now. So yeah, no, I saw that actually a few months after. It's a really cool movie. I liked it. It's fun. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, like I'm more like what you said. Kind of gives you the the vibe of the the festivities, so to speak. Yeah, it's just it's something about it. And again, it's just it's got that kind of like mysteriousness to it. You know, they do a lot with like atmosphere in the film. And there's a lot of work that they do with like the lighting and just the way that the Mm -hmm. haze is in the movie, like the fog, like rolling through and like certain scenes, especially when they're I love when they're summoning pumpkin head. I think that's one of the best parts of the movie. Uh, Just just how that's That's done. I think it's done really well. Uh, But yeah, anybody that hasn't seen it, obviously check check pumpkin head out. I think it's a fantastic movie kind of like cool what you because said too oh go ahead Will. Mm. no i was just gonna say it's interesting because it's it's like a monster movie so it's like a creature mm-hmm. feature but it's also kind of like uh you know it, it's pumpkin head is considered a, it, it's technically a demon right so yeah you kind of got a little bit of both in there so i think it's cool. just a, it, like what we were talking about too like this list isn't we're not saying these are like the top five like horror movies or you know movies for halloween these are just like the movies that we gravitate to to kind of yeah. get in the spirit for like the the halloween season and i think that's you know like what you said that's not like the best horror movie of all time by any means or anything but it's it's a fun movie nonetheless and on. i think yeah. yeah just turn on and have fun watching it so that i think that's what this list is trying to convey yeah mm-hmm. for sure yeah yeah that's my number five which one of you guys wants to go next chase Gabe? i'll go you know one just gonna chase. go in rotation here I'll go. Um, This one, actually, I'm surprised about the amount of people that don't know about this movie. And I don't know if it inspired Scream, but I'd have to have a feeling that it did because it's very um, Scream-ish and very Phantom of the Opera-y to a degree. Um, But that's going to be 1991's Popcorn. Um, Mm -hmm. So Popcorn is a movie by Mark Harrier. Look up that poster if you guys haven't already. Anybody listening? It's like one of the coolest fucking posters of the '90s. It's so the background cool. for this gave you the it yeah, sparked exactly. the idea. Right? Yeah, if you're watching it, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like actually totally right. forgot yeah. about it. Yeah, it's like right yeah. below my finger, yeah. right there. So, um, yeah. So essentially, what it is is, I believe, um, so uh, they're holding like a a try uh, a marathon of three horror movies at this uh, movie theater, and then the thing is is not necessarily directly what happens in the horror movie starts happening into the theater, but killings start happening inspired by the horror movies that are playing in there. And the cool mm-hmm. part is is they shot those horror movies to play on the screen. 
and it's just it's just wholly original it's really cool it's a lot of fun um i would say like it reminds me of um really scream and phantom of the opera mixed together just turn phantom of the opera into one of the goofiest movies that you could watch which is where the scream comparison comes in because it's almost like a satire and a parody of itself which is where i draw those comparisons you know yeah, it's, it's like not very trying meta, to... yeah it's like it knows what it is for sure yeah oh you've seen it game yeah i saw it a long time ago like yeah. I, I remember like the end i, I don't want to give away the ending but it's like yeah I, I, the ending kind of like is a good example of like the film knows what it's, what doing. it's doing like, yeah. yeah yeah it's been it, but it's been forever since i've seen it yeah it's just it's just so fun um the lead lady in this one is really good our killer is really really solid as well it does a really good job at building suspense while also keeping you entertained and it doesn't really have any down moments because again when you're you have down mm -hmm. moments you're watching a whole other horror movie unfold mm -hmm. in the theater you know and then it even has some moments where it's like banter and it's kind of cool to see that little time capsule of when people used to openly be rude and talk in the movie theaters. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so it's kind of cool to have that little time capsule and just people joking around. It's just it's it, 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 it's weird, but it kind of always it almost has that hangout vibe to it with killings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's just really cool. And it's uh, just like how Will said about Pumpkinhead or how we all describe Pumpkinhead. It's not one of those ones you got to get deeply invested in. I mean, you're not watching Oppenheimer or anything right here. You know, this isn't even you though know, you a should be. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's kidding. definitely just a one of those ones you turn on close to Halloween and it just yeah. embodies everything you want out of the Halloween spirit. So check that one out. It is streaming on Shutter. And if you're a fan of Joe Bob Briggs, Joe Bob actually did a reaction. I believe it was around this time last year because that was whenever I rewatched it. I usually I didn't mm. rewatch it outside the time I usually did because Joe Bob did a Halloween special for it great movie and this doesn't oh, yeah. have I, I remember this had a uh, it doesn't have a 4k right it's just a, no. a blu-ray through um no. yeah just a synapse was so it synapse has a blu-ray for it do they i've I actually never so. looked for the blu-ray believe it or not because it's always I, was, I could be wrong i saw that like, i think it was like last i could be wrong maybe i'm thinking of another movie wasn't like a year no, ago a year and a half i think ago? you're like, right because I, a... I think i have i think i have the blu-ray upstairs i'm pretty sure it's synapse that, that yeah it, it is I was going to say Severin, too? but it, it is Synapse. Yeah. There yeah. is. Wow. Oh, there was a steelbook for it. I'm I didn't know there was a steelbook for it. I didn't know that, man. And you're over here dropping knowledge. Yeah, dude. Me. No, I, I remember mm -hmm. someone had posted it. I think it was, I don't know if it was on the Discord or something, but I remember someone had posted it. They said that Synapse or, I don't know which one it was, but I guess it was Synapse. Um, but that's why I didn't know if it was a 4K when it came out a year ago or two. Yeah, 2017. And that's crazy. That's $45 for a steelbook on Blu-ray still after seven years of it coming out mm. that's nuts it's a fun mm. movie i haven't seen it in forever mm. but like i never made that connection actually when you were talking about it just now of like how it like heavily influenced the scream just because of how self-aware it is it is yeah, yeah. It, it really feels like it man it's a like fun what, movie man yeah that's a good i definitely one. got a hold of scream like way before mm -hmm. so like while i was watching it it's like i don't i don't think i've ever went out of my way to see if it was inspired by that i'd have to have a feeling that just screams inspired by a shit ton of horror movies there's not like just one, oh for sure you know? yeah but I'd have to have an inkling of an idea that Wes Craven definitely watched that movie for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a What's good your pick, dude. Yeah. Well, let's just do, let me see here. I got the list. Let me see. You're starting with Tenet? Or are you going to go? Tenet, uh, I know, right? I think the whole, uh, Christopher, <laughs> I'm going to do a whole video on how every Christopher Nolan <laughs> oh film is a horror God. movie. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Break it down. Dude, let's, great no, I actually had Scream. Let's just go with Scream because I actually have oh, really? that as one of my top five. Yeah, dude, Scream is just. I think the thing with Scream, and I think we talked about it when we did the Scream 6 review, Scream, it just has a special place in my heart just because it was the, like, slasher film for me growing up. Because I was yeah. born in 89, so, like, this was, like, I was, what was it, seven years old when this movie came out, dude? But I just remember we had rented it from Blockbuster after it came out, and I was, dude, I don't know why, I just gravitated towards it so much. And and, and every year, literally all I do is dress up as, as Ghostface. So, like, yeah. it, simple. It, it's just, yeah, it's simple. It's a clean, fun movie, dude. It's, it's, it's just a fun movie to pop in. I watch that every year. I think, actually, we try to watch all the Scream movies every October. Like we try to get yeah. through them within a week. Like it's just something that me and my wife do, but it's, it's just a fun movie. I mean, I think we've talked about scream so many times, but yeah, it's still one of my favorite horror movies do just with like going off the popcorn thing of how self-aware it is, how you mm -hmm. have good killings. You got the horror, you got the suspense, you got a, you know, it's a fun story. And then you got the, you know, the whole kind of self-awareness with like the horror movie trivia and everything like that, that just makes it such a fun movie to pop in. 
Um, but yeah, that was actually my number five pick. So I thought that was a cool way just to kind of transition from Segway popcorn into to Scream. It. Yeah. So Man, and I'm excited wanna... for Scream Seven. You know, whenever they they get around to it, but we'll see how that goes. <sighs> Yeah, we, we can talk about that, a whole other podcast episode about our anticipation of that. But I do want to shout out that Scream, uh, skip forward 10 seconds if you've never seen Scream. If you haven't, it's kind yeah, of crazy <laughs> if you haven't seen Scream. But yeah. um, he has one of the best line deliveries at the end, whenever he's like, tell mom and dad I'm sorry. Oh. And <laughs> God, I hate that. I'm so much. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, oh, with man. Stu. It's oh, just, God. man, it's just great, yeah, dude. Stu. Like, it, mm-hmm. like they're over animated and they're just like it, it but like you know that's why you got to respect scream so much because honestly out of any of the killers he's the most realistic like you throw a chair and he actually stumbles over it and he gets up yeah. and looks at you confused and he's like grabbing mm-hmm. for his knife you know he's just another person you know yeah i i will say so like when you endearing. go through those like the like the actual like killing scenes like where they're like running through the house it actually looks like fairly like well shot and like really like it's like fast paced yeah. you know what I mean? it's not like other slashes where it's like kind of yeah. like this like you know the slow, slow dude behind you yeah just like yeah. you know and the you know the girls like running looking back and the dude's like a mile away i mean the, yeah. like like ghost is actually pretty fast I and mean, he's like yeah you know it's pretty exciting to actually watch like the the killings happen so um yeah, yeah dude it's, it's such a good movie and i think some of it too is the i mean not only just the self-awareness um but just the, the like the characters Commentary. are also yeah the characters are all just so extreme too i mean you mm-hmm. like you know doofy mm-hmm. and all these other ones like it's 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 just a fun movie dude i love Scream. yeah it's great. It's a masterpiece, man. Yeah. So, Will, number four. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with, I mean, again, we're not ranking these, so they're not in any particular order, but yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Let's go. Mm. Oh, and you got yeah. that sexy-ass deal book. I mean, no, yeah, show the money shots a little yeah. bit. Yeah. You got to let everybody see so that. I, I found it because I remember I tried to order this, and I was kind of late to the party on this. Um, so nice. But I saw it at Walmart. <gasps> they, they ended up mm-hmm. restocking it, surprisingly. So. I ended up grabbing it, but yeah, Return of the Living Dead. I mean, this movie's just a fun movie. Um, it's so it's good. Just, it, mm-hmm. It's not meant to be taken seriously, but I just love the the just the comedy in this movie. Like, there's a uh, the part where the uh, the toxin first gets released into the air, and the rainstorm, the thunderstorm happens, and uh, I forget what character it is, but it's the one of the older gentlemen and one of the kids, and they find that the dog that's cut in half on the shelf starts mm-hmm. moving. Mm. yeah and it's just so funny the guy just comes at it and like starts whacking it with what i don't know if it's a bat or whatever he has it's just dude it's just so zany. so absurd and over the top that i just laugh out loud every time i i, I watch certain scenes in this movie so yeah return of the living dead that's my number four uh mention here not mention okay. but pick i guess um that's cool and yeah point. like the tarman so nice. classic classic uh classic zombie great yeah. great practical effects in this movie as well so yeah return of the living dead i mean again like a lot of these movies are like major films that everyone's already probably talked about a million times so mm-hmm. there's not much else i don't want to go into a whole tangent on why this movie's great but again i just think it's it's going back to that vibe of just that time of year you know but this movie like definitely sets the mood and like with the thunderstorm and all that and, like then the characters being trapped in the graveyard i mean it's a it's some really cool set pieces in this movie too that i appreciate mm-hmm. so Hell yeah. living dead that's my number four pick good pick man great 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 pick my um how do you say this, guys? Chase is still having trouble deciding. No, <laughs> he's still so, he's still putting his list together. Yeah, actually, he's like, like fuck. It's, it's, not uh, it's so hard because I have so many. So like, um, I actually guys, we, can, we can do a part two to this. By the way, we don't have to I get know, it right all in one. <laughs> instead of putting the pressure on our <laughs> to get them all. Yeah, get them um, all I actually combined four movies into my fourth slot. That doesn't count. And the reason it doesn't count. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Well, so, <laughs> So, like, what? hear me out. It's because, like, you you guys know this. The audience somewhat knows this, I think. People in the server definitely know this. But I'm a mm-hmm. massive Hooper fan. Um, mm-hmm. I have yet to meet yeah. somebody that, like, just absolutely adores most. He's got some absolute shit movies out there. I'll, I'll be the first one to say that. But he's got some absolutely amazing ones. And there's four of them I rewatch every single year. I have to rewatch them every single year. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't need to go into detail about that. If you yep. disagree... 
go get evaluated yeah. because that's like the ultimate yeah. <laughs> horror movie. It's I consider it to be the greatest horror movie of all time. Um, that one is generally one I save for September, October time frame. Um, but I also wanted to shout out simultaneously three of his more under not well known movies. Um, Life Force. I had actually already rewatched that one because oh, over yeah, in the server we have a film movie. club. Yeah, yeah, we have a film club uh-huh. going on on the Discord now, and that one just won for next week. So I just rewatched it um, earlier today, um, so that way we could talk about it. But Life Force, if you don't know about it, that was actually probably one of his biggest budget movies that Tobe Hooper's ever done. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's it doesn't really have a plot. It's a practical effects like just fest. And it's just about this naked vampire lady that like she doesn't like suck your blood. She just like mouth to mouth resuscitates you and sucks the life force out of you. And she's just like this powerful ass like entity. Super cool. Super awesome. Another one. This one has like a pretty solid cult following Um, for some reason on my Wikipedia. It pulled up a 2019 movie by the same name. But it's mm. Fun House. I rewatch Fun House all the time. Oh yeah, um, that one's great. Really, really fun. I I'll be the first to admit the first half is a little slow, but once the second half really gets going, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, the last one and this one was going to be the one I was going to exclusively take up that slot, but I usually rewatch it in that exact order I listed out. But it's actually a Robert England movie. Um, that um, or it's not. It's Marilyn Burns and Neville Brand. My bad. Mm. But it is called Eaten Alive, and it was his, I believe, his second movie right after Texas Chainsaw came out in 1976. But it's about this dude in Louisiana that just keeps killing people, but he doesn't necessarily kill them. He'll injure them and then just feed them to his pet alligator. It's just kind of cool. It's yeah. just great effects. It's got that like grimy. The that, that tip Pearl and X. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? <laughs> I mean, it kind of has that vibe to it because he's just got this little alligator but the thing is, is like the practical alligator is actually done extremely well. It's actually really well shot. I'm a bigger fan. I think I literally have this out of five stars. Like I just, I really wow. think Hooper is a, a, a genius whenever, like, especially in this time frame I listed out, I would probably in that exact order say that those are his four best movies. Um, but Eaten Alive is just, it's, it really needs more attention, more love. So that's why I want to slot this in here because I rewatch it every single year. Um, mm. But it's got great aesthetics. And again, Marilyn Burns, same, the, our final girl from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it's cool mm-hmm. to see her in another role with Toe Hooper. Um, so yeah, definitely go check that out. And actually all of those except Texas Chainsaw are streaming on Tubi. So if you don't have it and you're in the US, actually shout out to our UK folks. I just got notified that last week Tubi launched in the UK. So we're not leaving you out anymore. Over oh, there. nice. So oh. you should have access cheers. to that as well over there. Yeah, yeah <laughs> cheers. <UK. laughs> cheers. Yeah. <laughs> So um, Tubi is, ha- uh, is we'll yeah. never stop plugging Tubi on this channel. Yeah. We're Hopefully, one day, unpaid sponsor. You know, they'll, they'll give us a discount code. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Yeah. laughs> they pay you ten cents per time you stream a movie on there from using our affiliate code. That link down in the description below. Yeah. Hey, but seriously though, Life Force that um, what it, Scream Factory put that out. Uh, they put out Funhouse as well, yeah. but uh, dude, Life Force is like it's great. I don't know how it's viewed now, but that movie was slept on for has been slept on for so long. Yeah, like, the, the practical effects in that are actually like incredible. Like for that what scene they in London do. was oh, inc- God. insane, dude. It's yeah. crazy that final act, dude. Yeah, it I gotta watch that again. Crazy I with it. Yeah. I I want yeah. I've I want to say I've seen it, but I haven't. I've seen it on TV, but I don't remember anything about it. Like at yeah. all, Gabe, yeah, the really budget was like I, I, the budget was yeah. twenty five million, right, or something like that. You wasn't yeah. it? I, I'm pretty sure it was based on a on a book as well. I don't yeah, know if it I'm was based off of, or um, thinking of something else, but I thought it was based on a novel. The Space Vampires by Colin Wilson, which I okay. also believe I could be wrong, but um, Bava's movie, I believe, mm-hmm. is based off of the same thing. Um, do you know which one? Planet of the Vampires. Planet of the Vampires, yeah, which is also a, a cool movie. Again, much more Solid. of like a B sci-fi movie, but still yeah. pretty cool. Like visually, very stunning film. Mm. As yeah. as a, as our you know Bob his movies, but mm. yeah, Planet of the Vampires. Shout out to that one too. It's a fun one. Yeah. So Chase cheated pretty much and took. Like, I did. Three or Man, four I've movies. listed like four movies. movies. <laughs> <laughs> four movies. Four movies for number four. I yeah. thought it made sense. Chase, Chase likes to bend the rules a little bit. 
I do. I play. I'm like, you know what? Game. Let me let me put like six movies in my number three slot here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's the fucking um, whiskey, obviously. He's, yeah, he's it's just the whiskey. Is he's like, taking it, liberty. Yeah, with it's doing it. Um, let's do That's for fine. number four because I don't have these in any specific order. Um, Chase mentioned it in his honorable mentions. I thought this would be in his top five, but uh, mm. Trick or Treat. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Trick I love that movie so much. It's such a fun movie to watch, man. I mean, if anything, out of at least for my top five, I mean, I'd, I'd have to think about it, but I, I would go as far to say it's probably the most festive, like Halloween mm -hmm. movie that you could watch. It's got that vibe. Sure. Like yeah, just even that sure. opening scene and, you know, where, where the dark neighborhood, you know, the girls like finishing up from trick or treating and everything like that and putting away the the decorations and all that crap. Like it's 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 such a fun movie to watch, dude. It, it, but it, at the same time, it's also like really well shot. I think it's underrated, mm -hmm. like how well shot that movie is because like it just looks it looks it's a gorgeous movie to look at yeah, um yeah and then you get the, the scene great. dude with uh what's his face um sam right i always forget sam. his name that's the only sam sam um yep. dude the, the, the end pump. scene with the yeah the, the old dude's house um yeah. i love that <laughs> whole sequence yeah. it's so fucking fun man yeah it's such a and he's such an iconic i'm surprised they really because i know i i think you and i were talking about it chase we we're looking at like the sequel that was supposed to happen or like and it never did so happen sad. yeah dude because i feel like he was like really i mean we were just talking about terrifier before rolling i feel like sam could have really been like a an Much iconic bigger. kind of yeah like if they had actually mm -hmm. utilized that and kept going with it um it's just a fun movie yeah. dude I, I just love the whole anthology structure of it just how everything all these different stories you're getting all these different stories how they all kind of string together in a way um yeah. and sam and is just badass scene. Oh yeah, and they like, perfectly come together. Yeah. But like Sam is just so fun, dude. He's such yeah. a fun little like villain. Like I, <laughs> I it, it pains me that they never did anything more with it. Um, yeah. you know, in this day and age where they're just bringing back so many older properties, I would love if they did something with Trick or Treat. Yeah, it's it's just kind of a shame that he didn't even. I don't believe he even did another horror movie after that. Man, I don't like, think it's so. just yeah. crazy. You know, uh, Michael Doherty, shout out. The guy that made Trick or Treat also did King of the Monsters. Um, what mm -hmm. a crazy-ass career to go yeah, from. Yeah, that trajectory um, is, is yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. But, I mean, it is cool that, like, you know, I have a Sam coffee mug over there. It used to sit oh, right dude. here as, like, a little prop set until I adjusted my camera. Um, mm. But it's cool. Like, right now, I went to go to – or, like, last week, I went to Spirit to see what they had. And they had a ton mm -hmm. of Sam stuff. They had a little tiny Sam Dude, doll, he's on – speaking cool. of – of terrifier call of duty sam's on call of duty this year too is he really that's yes awesome. dude yeah. that's <laughs> awesome. so it's like you know like these characters they've you know even if it was just one movie that came out forever ago they still have an impact and yeah i think that you could still do something with it. i don't think it's too late but i mean who knows but yeah that's my that's my number four dude i and we were talking about the arrow release i don't know why the hell they released it at the end of october that just pains me so freaking much mm. um even a but, week earlier dude a week week and a half i mean a week would still kind of piss me off because it's like if you know imagine you're a day late from getting <laughs> from oh, shipping God. like i'd be yeah. pissed but like yeah it's it's uh, but that arrow release looks pretty solid i'm excited for it yeah uh, that is one yeah. of my all-time favorite horror movies i yeah. just left it out because i felt like that's just i don't know like dude i mean that that's one of those movies that i got a hold of so early when nobody else knew about it like mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. back whenever i think i told you guys the story when netflix used to do like discs and stuff my dad got it the second that it was available for like the the straight to disc and stuff i remember yeah. sitting there yeah. watching it and i was like holy shit this is like <laughs> one of like the best made horror movies i've ever seen yeah. like it was just crazy and i thought sam was the coolest dude ever like a lollipop is a weapon Dude, mm -hmm. what the fuck? That's so cool. That's so badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got it from a Black Friday sale, dude. I literally bought I, I remember it was like 2000. Dude, I don't remember the year, but like I literally just picked it up randomly. I was like, this is like five or ten dollars. Let me, let <laughs> Why me not? buy it. Yeah. And then I yeah. watched it. I was like, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. I wish I had saw, was, I uh, wish I'd seen it theatrically. It, it was late 2000s when it came out, right? It was like 2007. Yeah, like seven, eight. Yeah. yeah. I think I picked it up. I'm like thinking 2008, 2009. And the thing I think that's unique about it, too, and I mean, I'm sure this is talked about, um, but the thing is, is that, like, being that it's anthology horror, too, I'm trying to think back to that time. There really wasn't anything mm -hmm. else like mm -mm. out at that time that we were, you know, even in the years that followed. I'm trying to think like, there was that movie like the ABCs of Death. Of Death. That's exactly what. Yeah, was we were talking about. about that. I think we had talked about that one. I yeah. told Gabe to watch it, and I told him a yeah. few yeah. pieces of he, it. He told me like, to skip yeah, it. Right. it. Yeah. <laughs> but even ABCs of Death, that was like years later because I remember that came out. 
I was probably in high school by the time the ABCs of death came out. That was like, yeah, 2013, I think, like you said, Chase. So there really Mm -hmm. wasn't anything else, at least uh, in American movies, like American cinema. Yeah. um, Mm -hmm. That kind of tackled anthology horror. So I think the fact that trick or treat was so successful, because if you think about it, like the VHS films didn't start until well after 2013. I think it was 2012 when the first one came out. might've been around the same time as ABCs of death. Yeah. So, um yeah i mean the fact that it was so successful at least within the horror community i just love the fact that it was anthology horror because for the longest time like anthology horror it was just wasn't a thing you know Mm -hmm. at least uh, i don't know about overseas i can't speak for like any of the korean films or japanese horror films because i'm i'm sure there's one movie i'm thinking of called phobia I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. I think it's a Korean film. It's a Korean horror movie, right? Yeah. I think it was a Korean film, but that was kind of cool because it was pretty much anthology horror, like similar structure. um, I think I remember that one. Yeah. um, Yeah. As far as like U.S. movie, like, you know, movies released in the U.S., Trick or Treat was really the only one that that tackled that kind of structure. So I feel if it came cool. out today, it'd be a lot more successful. I feel like it, it was kind of like I ahead think so. of its time in a way. And yeah. then it came out a little too early. Like if it'd come out like, you know, like 2017, 2018, I feel like it would have been a lot more successful. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's my for number sure. four. I think I was the number four, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we'll kick off number three, man. Okay, number three. So this is a more recent film. Uh, I want to just mention, I mean, this movie, when I saw this movie, a lot of people had some, I remember there being mixed reactions to this when it came out because, oh, people are like, it's it's too slow, it's too long, you know, there's not much going on, but I, I don't care. I think this movie is fantastic. Stammering? I think it's one of the most atmospheric movies. No, I'm oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta go. I just drew <laughs> I gotta I'm just go. Gonna, I, I, <laughs> like uh, yeah, just just turn the internet off. Um <laughs> no, it's actually it's uh it's a Robert Eggert film. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Let's go. Oh. Of course, Whoa, man. Shit. Oh, That's dude, I even think about that Witch. movie. Holy crap, dude. It'd be Witch. your number one. Your list oh. just changed. Yeah, I might have maybe yeah. see. <laughs> so no, but this movie, I mean, I I I love the directing style of this movie, the 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 sense of dread that mm-hmm. that he establishes in this film is just like unparalleled to anything that I had seen at the time. And I remember watching this going like holy shit, not like you know, and it's based on again the same time period that we talked about with with uh Haxon, the Salem mm-hmm. witch trials, that that whole thing, that whole era, right? where there was kind of like this religious hysteria happening. Uh, And it it was just a dark time in American history, as we know. But I mean, I think this movie captures that. It it captures what people at that time felt, right? Mm -hmm. And what they thought. And I think it really kind of takes a deep dive into the psychology of that, which I love, right? Um, But what I love about it is it kind of just, it it just kind of treads that line because there's also there's an examination of the psychology uh, of, of of what was happening at that time and how people reacted to to things that were were happening in the world or, or you know at least in this country, um, but it also kind of it, it shows us the other side of that the darker side like it, it asks the question like okay well this could very well be psychological and you kind of get that as well but you also kind of get the supernatural. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I love that it explores that in that way. But gosh, I mean, the, the way that this is shot to the color grading that Second Sight did on this. And I, I want to we should shout that out. And I don't know if we've mentioned this so before good. on the channel, but the Lionsgate release of this and the Second so Sight yellow. release, it mm-hmm. is night and day, night and mm-hmm. day. Like if you guys are going to check it's this so out on, on 4K or, or on home media, home it's video, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Get this, even the second sight standard. I highly recommend it. You know, uh, to be in your collection if you haven't haven't watched it already. If you don't own it, um, that's my pick. Uh, I love that was my first introduction to Anna Taylor Joy as well, who is absolutely great in this movie. I mean, all their performances in this movie are fantastic. The dad so, is so mm-hmm. good. The dad oh, yeah. is amazing. I, mm-hmm. Again, it's like it's so convincing too, and and that's the thing. It's like you really like feel for these characters, right? And it, it's mm-hmm. also like just the situation that they're in that just seems absolutely hopeless, mm-hmm. right? 
And when I think of other movies that kind of give me that that feeling, I think of more recently I could mention when Evil Lurks, which is much Let's much go. darker, mm. right? But but for the time that it was released, I mean, The Witch is just a, a I guess we can call it a modern classic because it is more of a, a modern mm-hmm. movie. But yeah. Robert Eggers is just a fantastic director, and I'm super excited for uh, Nosferatu in December. So shout out oh, to yeah, uh, to that. Looking forward to that. But yeah, The Witch is my number three pick. Yeah, shout out, uh, um, I had to throw that on there. Yeah, shout out Gabe's like, what has it been, like a year-long journey to still try to find that LE for a decent price? Yeah, dude. I just have the yeah. standard. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Yeah, Thanks for reminding me, bro. <laughs> I, got a, I got a shout out. I know D- Dave's a listener, but um, I was talking to him one night and he found out. I think I told you guys this. He found mm-hmm. out that I was looking for it. And he was mm. like, you know what? He was going through this phase where he wanted to downgrade his collection from like steel books and slips to just amorays. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, if you order me the standard and cover shipping, I'll send you the LE. And I was like, what's your address, bro? <laughs> Jesus, like, done. Yeah, what done is- deal. <laughs> done deal. That's the <laughs> best deal you'll ever get, man. That's a once yeah. in a lifetime. Had I said no, God. But um, yeah, wonderful pick. Um, this one um, for mine is uh, quite a bit of a no-brainer um dario Gento is an absolute god to me like he's easily you know just ahead of tobe hooper as one of my favorite directors of all time um but that's 1977 suspiria man like that's that's just i feel like that has to be on your list every year you know Mm. um it's got those nice gothic colors but it also blasts you with the pink red and blue and it's just so fun to watch and especially man Name me a score that isn't John Carpenter's Halloween that's more Halloween feeling than the Goblin oh, yeah. score in Suspiria. Yeah, like, the, <laughs> what's the main song where it's like the witches, like the la la la? Like yeah, that dude, fucking like, freaks me out, dude. Dude, <laughs> it's so creepy. And if you've got a really good so Atmos creepy. setup, there's been some people I told buy the Synapse release, put on the 4K. Like, shout out yeah. Chris, I know he listens to this. Um, Chris, he bought the 4K because like we both did like this trade deal. I still got to hold up my end of the bargain. I promise, man, I'm going to buy the James Bond set. I promise <laughs> you, bro, I will. But he bought all the movies I told him to watch and Suspiria was one of them. And he really thinks that that Atmos and if you don't, Chris has a crazy setup. And he said that Atmos is one of the craziest things he's ever heard in his setup. Mm-hmm. You know, he's mm-hmm. like when that Goblin score comes on. So if yeah. you don't have that or if you're a fan of that movie, shout out that 4K disc. But I, I could even see like it being a little bit more of an earlier fall type of movie, but it's just got the perfect yeah. vibes for me for like once October 1st hit Suspiria, you know, yeah. Um, blast that score up all the way. Cause you know, there's times, man, I'm not even afraid to admit this. I just pop the disc and let the main menu loop for a little while. Cause it plays the goblin score in Atmos. So I just let it loop, man. <laughs> it's so good, man. It's so good. I, I love the score so much. That's one of my favorite it would probably break one of my like my top list, but um, it's easily mm. like that. That's a pretty strong three. I know you guys aren't doing like an actual tiering, but I think it's a three would be a pretty, pretty mm. appropriate spot for me on that one. Mm. Yeah, Suspiria is uh, it's a fantastic movie. I mean, and I think it's there's there's so many things that it has going for it too. I mean, mm-hmm. even on the 4K disc, I mean, the soundtrack is one thing, but like you said, Chase, I think the visuals of that film, you know, Dario Argento, he you know he he's a fantastic writer like there's movies that he's done where the writing is mm. is fantastic i think the story is much better put together some of his earlier films prior to this particular period but suspiria i think it's solidly written but i mean this is really much more of a visual movie and for anybody visual that hasn't seen it yeah you, you talked about those colors dude like if, if you watch this on an <laughs> yeah. oled or, or a good tv i mean God it damn, alters this your DNA. It's so <laughs> yeah. good to look at. But you want to talk yeah. about not only does the soundtrack put you mm-hmm. in the vibe of like Halloween and just, you know, just feeling that, that it's just, it, I don't know, man. It just gives you that energy, man. It just gives you that mm-hmm. vibe and those Hunts visuals up. too. I like, have not seen people. it yet because Chase hasn't oh, challenged dude. me to watch it. Yeah, now I need yeah, You got to watch it, man. <laughs> How have I not challenged you? I figured you'd watch it, you bro. Watch. Like, I, now you see, I, I, I think you've challenged me two of his movies. I don't think you've given me yeah. Suspiria. No, this is it is a I will say this Dave. It, it, <laughs> the like soundtrack is killer and not everybody likes the soundtrack though. I've heard people that aren't fans of the what? soundtrack just cuz they're not into like the prog rock stuff, which is totally yeah, fine, fair. but that's fair. I think it works for this to an extent, mm-hmm. but I mean I think really the the treat of this movie is the visuals. I think the the color grading that that uh, Synapse did on this is just amazing. Yeah. Um and there's some really like creepy scenes in this movie that are genuinely like just visually 
it's like, like you can't scene. unsee them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I do think there's some surprises in there, you know, for first time, you know, for a first time watch that will, will stick with mm -hmm. you. So I, I think it's definitely worth checking out Gabe for sure. I'll, yeah, I'll so. catch it this month because I always try to watch new horror movies in October mm. anyway. So I'll probably I'll either yeah. wait for Chase to challenge me or or I'll just watch it. Maybe here. <laughs> what was our challenge? We'll we said it last week. It was video yeah, drone. You, you told me doing? to watch. Oh, it was the curtain. No, not the remember. curtain. The, the audition. I got to watch the audition. And you oh, the audition. the audition. Yeah, he never seen yeah. the audition. I think. Well, yeah, I was. We did that video. Will had told oh, me uh, to audition. To yeah, watch audition. Takashi yeah. Miike. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I yeah, think and, yeah, I was I was watching Japanese horror movies, and then mm -hmm. Will was like, "Yeah, watch that." <laughs> and I saw it. I'm like, Jesus "Yeah, Christ. audition <laughs> by today's standards is probably considered, you know, much more tame." But yeah. you know, when, whenever I revisit that movie again, like a lot of movies, I always try to think of it and watch it with the perspective of you know the thinking of the time frame that it came out, you know, the year yeah, that it was released, sure. and and what was happening around that time, you know, with a lot of movies like that, and. You know, the, the argument can be made that, like, there's some pacing issues with it, which, I mean, I don't necessarily... The first half and the second half of the movie are, like, almost completely different. Like, yeah, it, it's are. not... So, uh, yeah, to me, it's not, like, a pacing movie. It just turns into a different movie, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, it kind yeah. of, like, flips the script a little bit. So, But I, I, mean, I recommended it not to Chase, because I'm like, I'm surprised he hadn't watched it yet. Yeah. I thought that'd be a cool one for him to see. Yeah, but... Chase, I'm surprised you haven't seen that. That's, it's uh... a foreign movie, right? Or international movie? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you know, actually, somebody asked me this Japanese on the server. They, they had went through, like, my letterbox, and they're like, why do you, like, I have a good amount. Um, mm. They would ask, like, why don't you watch, like, a, a more foreign? And, I, I again, I have a good amount. But mm -hmm. foreign, I want to make sure I'm completely distraction-free. And, like, with what I do for work, well, it's, yeah. it's super hard to do. Yeah, I have to be. Boom, yeah. you know? And that's not saying I don't lock in on other movies. It's just, and that's not to say anything about different about international movies. It's just a little bit more relaxed a, to watch something in my investment. native language. Yeah, you know like, I mean? yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree hundred yeah. percent. I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just I, foreign is just gotta you know lock. That's right. what it's took like me so long to watch The Villainous when you had recommended that, just because I was like, I need to sit it's down three and like watch hours. It. Yeah, it's a long movie. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's it's worth it. You know what I mean? It is yeah. worth it at the end of the day. But yeah, it is an investment. It's a time investment. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. What number so three? What, what eight, number are we on? Number three. Three Let's see here. Numero two. I'm gonna act like I have a solid list going, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I don't. It's Dominion, right? Uh, oh hell no. Um, yeah. Let's go with. I mean, no, this one. Uh, I mean, we've talked believer. about this one. Fuck no. Um, we've talked about this one, especially with uh, Romulus coming up, but the original Alien man. I'm just. It's uh, just another one that's like a. Yeah. It's near and dear in my heart. It's just. I think it's one of those it's uh, along with the thing it's probably one of the top practical effect movies that you know I just always go back to and I always need to throw in like some sci-fi horror during the month just to kind of get mm. that uh, you know Same. that ride going yeah so like the alien is yeah. always the, the way to go and it's just we've talked about this movie so many times it's the isolation it's the practical effects it's it's just uh you know you never yeah. know where it's at man it's just a fun monster flick um yeah, there, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but Alien, dude, I watch it every every Halloween. It's like a given. Like usually the first week yeah. of October, I'm watching Alien. So I'm Gabe, always amazed to, uh, by the uh, set design in that film too. Even on the crazy. 4K, it's oh like yeah, when they're dude. running through the tunnels on the ship and you get the steam. It just it's Ugh, it's incredible. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the amount it's of like, detail in that movie is freaking crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's nuts. Yeah, Gabe, um, something that you would like, it's not going to reach Alien Heights for you, but maybe a first-time watch for you. I mentioned it, I probably mentioned it before, I know Will has seen this, but I did it in that 2B video that I did that I never continued the series with on the YouTube, but Saturn 3, you might get a kick out of that. It's like a good mm. hybrid of Alien and Terminator. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's like a sci-fi horror about like a rogue Terminator, essentially, but it's Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas, bro. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's got a great cast. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, that poster I mean, it's looks kind of that person. The poster awesome. looks wonky. As fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fucking, fucking dude. Killer. Oh, that, uh, What's his name? Fucking uh, Harvey Keitel's in that movie too, isn't he? From yeah. what I remember. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, that is like a movie so I rewatch. Yeah, I rewatched yeah. that one. I bought the Blu-ray, so I tried to crack. Oh, it it's fair. It's fair. Fawcett that's in it. <clears throat> oh, did I say Michelle Pfeiffer? Fair. Yeah, you said Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, Fawcett. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wonky photo, man. Or the poster looks really wonky. Yeah, you'll, <laughs> you'll have fun. It's, it, it's it just out. one of those low-budget, 
um, sci-fi horror movies that you can have an absolutely wonderful yeah. time with. Which I, I and I want to preface it, and we should do a video sometime on sci-fi horror, just because I feel like that. Yeah, a lot of people haven't been doing sci-fi horror lately. I feel like they you know, been, like there hasn't been a new. It is definitely a risk, but like there haven't been like yep. new, you know, films IPs. in the past, like you know, like ten years that have really kind of, uh, you know, scratched that itch in terms of in terms of sci-fi horror. And I wish more people mm. would actually, you know, invest there in. There was it. that. I, one. I guess that one that we saw recently. What was it? The well, there's Romulus, oh, well, that... but there's also the one with Mia Goth and um, Robert Pattinson. It's not like it's it's more cosmic horror to a degree, but High Life, I think, is what it's called. High Life, yeah. Uh, is that the name of that Life. movie? I was trying to think of what that was. Yeah, it, but it's much more 2001 than anything horror. Yeah, it has some psychological elements to it for sure. I thought what that was, was the really one good. that we just saw. Like, didn't we see one about a space station or something? You and I did the review for. Oh, it, ISS. Great. Yeah, dude. dude oh, I, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. I forgot about that movie. Yeah, holy but that one was hell. more. I don't know if that was yeah. sci-fi horror. That was more like suspense in a way because there wasn't really any like huge yeah. horror elements to it. But yeah, I wish it, mm. that's definitely like a genre that I really love, but it's like it's yeah. never really touched upon that much. So yeah, yeah, the blends two of my favorite things and I definitely want to see it more. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is, man, is there's so much that came out in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Like, oh, you for could sure. Just, you could live the rest of your life and probably see a new one every single week, yeah, man. Like, absolutely. I saw one that uh, was actually made by Disney that had Anthony Perkins by it like forever ago and i just rewatched it on disney plus a few weeks ago it's called a black hole pretty interesting man check it out i remember that movie dude i, yeah, I fucking dude Perkins, what the right? fuck isn't that what year was that wasn't it like like 83 19... yeah like 19 was it 80 yeah i, I want to say it was like 78 like, i don't like remember but... 70s yeah dude i remember that movie yeah i haven't seen that movie in forever 79 yeah dude it's pretty oh, okay crazy. yeah see, yeah it's, it's poster I goes remember... crazy yeah, I remember that movie, dude. I gotta rewatch that. That's on Disney uh, Plus. Disney Plus, yeah, dude. What I was just hell? scrolling there. There was a oh, it was um Aliens three and four. Um, uh, I, I thought I had seen them and I thought I had an opinion on them, but dude, I I guess I had never seen those fucking movies. You because I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I did, and then it was recommended mm. next, and then I googled it, and I was like, holy shit, Anthony Perkins in a sci fi movie, mm-hmm. and I was mm. like, yeah. But then I remembered I had seen it a long time ago. Like, dude, I had to have been like so young seeing that that's uh, yeah, I gotta uh check this robert out forster's in that as well i love robert forster mm-hmm. he's like one of yeah. my favorite actors oh yeah he would dude now it's coming back to me holy yeah, shit robert forster and then uh gary nelson who was the director of that he's also the guy that did um half uh, he did some of the series like gun smoke half gun will travel mm-hmm. um mm. but he also did um freaky friday mm. oh same director cool. yeah cool um, my number two is actually one that I don't talk about a lot. Um, so I mean, I can't even fucking wait. Did, right did Will do his number two or no? No, well, isn't it going me, Will, you? I don't fucking remember. The, the alcohol is getting to us. No, <laughs> wasn't it well, you it, and then me and then Will? No, you, Will, or me, Will, Will then you. You're, you're more sober than me. <laughs> <Just, laughs> what, what order uh, was it, bro? We're gonna I'm going to be honest, I uh, <laughs> haven't really been paying attention. So uh, I'll just fire away. <laughs> yeah, go I was, ahead. I was no, let's just do it. It's bit. all good. You yeah, know, I was, was going to be out. like, yeah. yeah, I was going to be like, you know what? There's this unknown movie, this guy named Cronenberg. You know, he may have so done a couple God. movies you've heard about. <laughs> um, but fucking video drone, man. Come on with it. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, video. By the way, guys, know. this podcast episode is sponsored by right. Benchmark Whiskey. Yeah, Yeah, that is very true, man. Um, but yeah, you know, the thing is, is like, I usually rewatch it at some point in October, but I've already seen the movie three times this year. I rewatched, that's probably one of my, other than the original Hellboy, my most rewatched movie I've ever seen. Wow. You you really do watch that a lot. Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. No, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I watch it a lot, dude. Like I try to rewatch a Cronenberg a a couple of times a month, man, because like his movies, Um, and this is a whole like series I have planned, um, some insight. Like I, I have planned like these Cronenberg dissection videos for how much that like, I actually fucking watch his movies. Um, and eventually I'll get to it, but I, there's so much in all of his movies, man, you know, from like product placement to the way that people say things to what is foreshadowing, like the fly, you could see 50 times and probably find something new in it, you know, a, a mm-hmm. background prop that kind of foreshadows something. 
Um, yeah. And video drums, no exception, but I feel like you could watch this on Valentine's Day. I mean, not probably with the date, but I mean, you can just watch it at any point of the year, you know? <laughs> uh, but video drum, man, um, one of my favorite movies of all time. It, it, it's firmly placed as like my fifth favorite movie ever made. Um, it's just so good, Gabe. You, I can't even really talk about it because that's a movie mm-hmm. that you got to go in completely yeah, blind, I man. Gotta, I gotta um, it, man. A lot of the people from the Discord that tune in, I kind of went through a Cronenberg wave. If you popped in there and everybody was talking about Cronenberg, it's because I was obsessing over Videodrome for a couple weeks. I was rewatching it constantly. But um, yeah, number two is Videodrome. There's nothing else I really need to say. You know, Chase is like developing a doctoral program on uh, Cronenberg analysis. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) you you can enroll in my university (laughs) at the link in the description. Yeah, (laughs) his dissertation expectations are pretty high. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) only ten bucks per semester. (laughs) As much as the whiskey costs. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That is true. And it'll probably last you as long oh, as it No, he's got to start charging too because he's got to buy that $300 uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, oh, yeah. Shit, special dude. set. Dude. From Dark dude, that Sky or whatever. Out, oh, dude, man. that comes out Tuesday, bro. I thought you weren't getting week. it. Yeah. You said you weren't getting it. Well, I, I, okay. So let me defend myself publicly. <laughs> about it, apparently. Let me defend my. They had that Terror Vision sale. And I dropped like three hundred and fifty dollars on the television cell, so I was like one movie mm. or twenty one movies. I yeah, clearly went be. for twenty one. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I remember we were in the chat and you tried to reverse wallet bully me because I'm yeah, because you're wallet bully. Co- you're always yeah, constantly bully. going at you in your wallet, bro. Yeah. And then this time I was like, nope, Terravision, bro. I got to support Brad and my boy over there. So yeah, I went for Terravision. Yeah. So maybe eventually, but Chase they produced three thousand units. <laughs> Well, they produce 3,000 units of it, bro. There's no way they're selling at that price. So if I what's wait, the, what's the no MSRP on it? Fucking way. 299, bro. 299, oh, I'm getting that for 150 in six months. I bet money. Hold yeah. me publicly accountable in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting it for yeah, 150 in six months. 300 on a Texas chainsaw. I can't. 150, I, I, I so. would. But I think 150 is fair, especially because of the it comes with the damn chainsaw, man. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah 150 is totally well, fair. 300 is funny because. Kind of People are like, yeah, you could just go to the hardware store and buy an actual ch- <laughs> chainsaw. Just yeah. get it on One that actually works. Yeah. They're yeah. trying to dangle the carrot with that, though, because like, they got like the special VHS with like the artwork. Oh, yeah. Like the special cover artwork on it. I was like, come on, guys. Like, it's, it's... the actual box. Like, did you see the there yeah. was a guy that saw it at a convention and do the box mm. itself is like, I don't know, bro. Like, it just it's. I don't know, dude. That's like one of my Pickles favorite movies ever, bro. Yeah, dude. Like, because <laughs> yeah. I already plan on meeting the, you know, like we we all here. If you've been tuning in a while, I've shared the story about Alan, but like getting that signed would be so fun. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I was That'd thinking. Of. Yeah. Show up yeah. with a chainsaw, and then Alan's like, "Hey, where'd you get this, man? I thought we were signing your second site like last time." Yeah. Oh well, something else came out, man. <laughs> I need a new signature. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could see the price going down on that, though. I don't think you're Easily. wrong. Three thousand yeah. units. If it was like three hundred, I'd kind of be like, mm, yeah, you know? then I'd panic. Three thousand. Yeah, bro. Blu-rays get less releases than that, bro. And you're yeah. telling me that three hundred dollars chainsaw is gonna sell out? You're fine, dude. I'm not too yeah. worried about it. Exactly. Will, what is your number yeah, two? Yeah, Will, sir? number two, man. Uh, I'm gonna do two movies for number two, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet that makes sense. I'll sense. take. A I did four for yeah. four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but I'm, you I'm guys are following cheaters, your <laughs> I'm following your playbook. I'm taking a page out of your playbook. Uh I'm gonna go with Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Because and Great double I will say this. Yeah, I got this cool uh steelbook collection. Oh, you Evil got Dead that one. And Evil Dead 2. That's yeah, dope. Dude, I and I'm trying to remember who put this out. Um, Lionsgate. I don't think this was well, it was Lionsgate, but I don't know if this was through Best Buy or not. This was a while ago. I don't back think it was put this out. I got you. Um hold up. But it's I remember films. when that came out. That's dope, dude. Yeah, That's this really is a cool. sick one. I just love the I love the cover art on this. I love the slip too. Best Buy. Um, was it Best, it Buy? Best really? Buy? Yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah. Well, that's so. the slip. And then you get the yeah. cover so there. Nice, man. That's the I only love, like I think that's the only set because I hate buying like like movie sets for like packs. two and one. Yeah, like but like for Evil Dead, yeah. like one and two, I feel like it's appropriate almost. Yeah. yeah. Well, Agreed. that's what I, that's exactly my thought. I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get that because that's that's cool. Yeah. But um, no, I mean Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. I I love Evil Dead, but I I, I you guys know I love Evil Dead Two more. It's it's my favorite mm-hmm. film 
in the franchise. Uh, and, you know, Chase mentioned 2013. I mean, 2013, I haven't watched every year, but I've, I've watched it probably every two to three years. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I still think Evil Dead 2, I just, I, I, Evil Dead 2 is essentially a remake of Evil Dead. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a soft remake reboot. with the comedy tones to it, man. Yeah. And I, I just think like they, they have that element of slapstick humor in it that mm -hmm. they just nailed it perfectly, you know? And I think there were elements that were present in the first film that weren't necessarily meant to be taken as comedy that I think they picked up on after the fact mm -hmm. in hindsight and said, you know what, let's do this again, but let's kind of, you know, there there's, cause there's, and I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm, trashing the first movie or like speaking negatively about it because i love the first film i think it's you know again it goes without saying it's iconic it's an achievement mm -hmm. uh i mean you one could say it, as far as low budget filmmaking everybody Probably talks about halloween yeah i mean i think evil dead even i think it deserves more credit than even something like halloween just because mm -hmm. of how low a budget i mean they literally so low. you know yeah bruce campbell and sam raimi talked about how they used to go around to doctors and lawyers and and show them this movie and try to get them to, to give them money to, to you know to distribute it you know they had like this short film that they would show and they would get these parties together of these doctors and these lawyers and they'd you know, give them all these, like, you know, they have like this catering, you know, all, all this fancy food, all this, like this big, nice dinner. And then it's like, all right, what are we going to watch? Or we're going to show them <laughs> evil dead, you know, like people <laughs> cutting limbs off time. and shit, you know? So yeah, I, I feel like it deserves more credit than most other, you know, low budget films in terms of that time period, you know, at least mm -hmm. late seventies, you know, throughout the eighties. But, uh, I, I will always stand by the fact that I think they took what they thought was missing from evil dead. And they, they fixed that with evil dead too. Um, mm -hmm. and chase, I, I know you stepped away, but I was just mm -hmm. pretty much saying that everything, that evil dead two has was, was everything that was missing from the first film. I think the first film, although the practical effects complete. were great, you know, there, there's a, there's a little bit of like goofiness to it, I guess I will say yeah. with the first movie. And I think they kind of picked up on that and, and adjusted with, with evil dead too. I think they found the sweet spot between this, this like extreme, like horror, like gore practical effects angle and the slapstick comedy, because mm -hmm. again, the, the gore and the, the violence is just so over the top to begin with. There is, yeah. it is absurd, you know, in nature. So I just feel like that meshes so well with the, the just that slapstick comedy style that they kind of uh, peppered throughout that second film. And again, I, I, I maintain the fact that it's the best film in, in the franchise. I know Chase, I was saying 2013 is like a close second in, in yeah. many people's eyes. And in fact, some people like 2013 they, yeah, more because 2013 is just straight. I love 13. Just it's, you know, the there's, bus, bro. it's, it's just, you know, balls to the wall, which I, yeah. I appreciate as well. But yeah, these are like yearly watches for me. Yeah. And again, I mean, guys, we got to remember like, like Gabe, you've talked about it. A, a couple times these movies aren't necessarily our favorite horror films these are just movies that just get us in the vibe you know mm -hmm. and, and evil dead is just perfect it's cozy uh, for setting. me you know yeah. yeah it is it's like the cabin in the woods and again these two movies are very similar like again mm -hmm. it, it, the second one is pretty much a soft reboot of the first so you can watch these back to back and it's just a great time and it's like you put it on on like a friday or a saturday night you know and and you just hang out man it's it's great so i, yeah. I love it so that's yeah. my Solid pick. pick, man. Great pick. I'm so curious what Gabe's number two is because I know. Oh, you're yeah, it is my. Turn. I don't know why I was like, "Oh hell yeah, I'm running out of ideas." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's see. We got this one was an honorable mention too, man. I think it's. Uh, I have to go with Saw. The original oh, nice. Saw. I always watch the original Saw, dude. Always, original. and it's just it. It's just another. I think it's just one of those movies, just kind of like what I talked about with Scream, man. Where it's just, I think. Scream for sure. I was younger because that came out when I was like seven or eight, and then I, mm -hmm. I kind of just ran the coattails of like watching the franchise from there. But uh, as a teenager, like in high school, like Saw was like the horror movie of that era for sure. Where it was like every, I mean, yeah. I remember the damn fucking commercials. It was like, what, what was the tagline? It was like, if it's Halloween, it must be Saw or something like that. It was like every freaking year was a yeah another Saw movie. But I remember just everyone after school, like on a Friday night, we were like, oh, Saw's out. Let's go see Saw. And everyone would just go see Saw together. And that was just like 
a tradition and it was just something that we do and it was so much fun dude but the original just always has a special place in my heart because it still has to me i will argue probably the best cinematic twist of all fucking time like i still i show people that movie that have never seen it before and their jaw just drops hits the floor like it's such a fun movie man i know we talked yeah. about saw a lot when saw x came out which i mean i'm surprised wasn't there there's not a saw movie coming first? out this year right no, it got delayed, and supposedly it's indefinitely delayed. It was supposed to be oh, around this time because, <laughs> actually, dude, I think it is today of our recording. The one because it dropped nine twenty nine. I want to say it was our first episode dropped either nine twenty nine, nine thirty, and it was the Saw X review, dude. It That's was Saw crazy X review, yeah. yeah. Holy yeah, crap, a, man! That's crazy. One year what later, year. holy yeah, shit, yeah, that's nuts. Dude. Um, yeah, Saw is yeah. just, it's one of those franchises, dude. I mean, it has its ups and downs. There's definitely Saw movies I hate that I can't stand that are just garbage to me. But it's, yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. original is just so much fun, man. I think it is really... Is it your favorite one? Yeah, for sure. I think I'd probably put it as my favorite one. I mean, there, there are some that are close. I, I think that the first three are just peak. They're probably the best ones. But yeah, uh, the first one is definitely the, the most fun that you're going to have with all the twists and turns. Because... I still oh, care sure. about the stupid freaking narrative structure in a, in a horror movie. I don't know why, but like, yeah. I, I think the first one just, it just, I mean, it has the narrative. It has the, the twist. It has the, the, you know, the damn kills that are, you know, so gruesome and grotesque. So it's, it's a fun movie, man. I always watch yeah. it. I, I, I introduced it to my wife. She had never seen it. And I remember like, I'm like looking at her on the sofa yeah, when she's gonna, watching like the, the final twist. Yeah. She's like, what the fuck is this coming to? And she sees, you yeah. know, for people who haven't seen Saw yet, spoiler, like, yeah you see jigsaw starting to get up and it's like she's like what yeah. the fuck <laughs> yeah like she has yeah. to like yeah. rewind it she's like what the hell how does this you know it's it's so fun watch, showing people that movie but yeah, yeah saw is my number two man yeah i kind of do want to just ride the uh, coattails of that uh, i don't think i've ever said this but saw three is actually my favorite one hmm. um, really interesting it's because it, it removes everything physical you know yeah um that guy is just put through like Dude, I, I, I'm not even going to lie. That's why people hated that one, actually. Like, they hated yeah. that he was right. like... Yeah, I like, remember. That's what was it. causing all the you controversy. You were watching people yeah. in the traps instead of like them having the decision. Yeah, and I think that's just such a cool idea because like depending on who you are, like the amount of mental torture he goes through, you'd yeah. be like, dude, put me in that fucking trap up there already and just like, dude, say less. Yeah. <laughs> you know what For I sure. mean? Like, Because like with what the character goes through um i just think that dude that like you know i'm an emotional person like that like i could kind of put myself in other people's shoes like mm -hmm. in, in, in empath in that way you know and so it's like i kind of felt for him like damn bro like bro, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like this is kind of shitty what he's doing to you and yeah you weren't the best person but man this is fucked it's up shitty. plus know? well i mean he had lost his son too so this is all yeah. shit about like his son's you know yeah and all that like, crap yeah it's a, it's a messed up movie it's when you crazy it. dude and that's why i liked it i think Honestly, had Saul never gone past three, I think that would have been again a perfect trilogy. You know? Yeah, I love so the I adore first three movies, man. I love yeah. them. Like I, 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 we usually watch the whole series, even five, which is my, I fucking hate five and three. Three D is the worst. I can't stand fucking the seven. Is uh, a five the one with the uh, Wahlberg, with his brother, and the ice? No, that's four. That's four. Five no. is the one with Hoffman and like the. the oh, with the yeah. um, with this. Like the sewer, the, the collars, yeah, and yeah. the pen thing. It's so fucking dumb, dude. It's yeah, dumb. yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a low point. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So we're now we're on number ones. We're on number ones. So this one number actually one. is a number one for me. Um, it was the it was the fastest I think I've ever put anything on a list when we've uh, described it, and I don't think this will be a surprise to any of you guys. Um, Tara? Tara? Which one? Tarot? Tarot, dude, no fucking <laughs> no. Oh bro. god, that movie was so bad, bro. Oh, dude, speaking god. of, I realized I gave it a one point five. I don't know. I haven't gone back and listened to what the fuck I said. Maybe I was being nice about it, but there's something about that movie that I keep thinking about at least twice a week about how bad it was. Damn, was like, twice dude, a week, so bad. Jesus, bro, you're still on so that. Bad. Damn, dude, yeah, it's so really bad. Me. That's a Cronenberg movie in yeah. the making. Just a movie that's like stuck in your brain and won't yeah. Get out. Yes, Speaking yeah, of, exactly. That would be the shout out substance. You guys need to go see that. Watch you guys it, would yeah. love that. We are in full on substance sweep season. Well, you said I'd I hate it. I prefer fair enough to say you said I'd hate it. Dollar. So you love it on an artistic every time that you plug this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Will would actually, I think it might be his favorite movie of the year. 
Um, no, I'm listen. I yeah. don't doubt that. I, I mean, yeah. I have a feeling that I'll at least like it, like because it, yeah. it does look interesting. I haven't watched the trailer though. I don't want to spoil this movie for me, so I, I haven't watched anything regarding it. But I will. Uh, I'm going to attempt to see it this week. I'm going to yeah, make, at it, least make it my goal. Make a public commitment to me, week. guys. We cannot do the FSTS awards without you guys watching that. <laughs> like, there's just no way that would have been like not doing minus one last year and not having it. Right, bro. Like, Damn. holy shit. Anyways, back to number one. So my number one yeah. movie, I actually watched this. Sometimes it's kind of like, uh, you know how some people will have a Christmas movie as they're unwrapping presents and everybody's eating mm-hmm. and they just have the same movie, like a Christmas story playing over and over. This is that movie for me. Sometimes I will only watch it from like 10 to midnight um, because of the context of it and stuff. But that's going to be Season of the Witch, the poster right over there over um, mm. Will Shoulder. Oh, hell yeah. I think, wow. I think yeah. it is the perfect fucking Halloween movie, man. Like everything about it, dude. Like I actually mm. I had seen Halloween one when I was way younger. Um, it, it didn't necessarily like scare me to the fullest degree. But the fucking this movie's twisted and it doesn't get talked about how twisted it is like kids masks melting your face. It's like, dude, I was kind of scared to wear Halloween masks as a kid, you know, (laughs) Um, it's like, what if that dude just flips that switch, you know, and starts playing like um, 10 more days till Halloween, you know, it's just such a catchy ass (laughs) tune too, you know, Um, but sometimes I like to I'll either watch it on October 30th and rewatch it again on actual Halloween but I think it's great to time it when he's like, turn it off, like right at midnight on Halloween <laughs> for some reason. I got like a ritual with this movie, man. Uh, but, I, you know, I've been on record and it, it's, it's again, there's so many great Halloween movies and John Carpenter's so great. But there's just something that stands out amongst the Halloween mm. franchise ab- amongst. I'm not saying it's my favorite horror movie. I've already said Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. is. Um, but this is probably my favorite one to revisit. You know, there's like a difference between something that's just e- extremely well made, like Texas Chainsaw, you know, like that's just a genuine mm-hmm. masterpiece. And this is a movie I just have a ass load of fun with, you know, mm-hmm. it's just so much fun. The the, the practical effects, the score. Um, what's his name? It's not John Saxon that's in it. Um, uh, Tom Atkins. His- Tom Atkins is so fucking good in this movie. Yeah, he's uh, but that's my number one. And that would actually be like a number one. I, I have mm-hmm. to rewatch it. And I've plugged it on here before. Shout out that 4K. That's one of the best discs that Screen mm-hmm. Factors put out. That yeah. HDR makes that witch mask look so new. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a great movie. So shout out Season of the Witch. I love that movie so much. Five out of five. Ten out of ten. Great movie. Yeah, wow. Season of the Witch. I mean, there's not much else to say about it. it again, I think it 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 lost its audience because of the time it was released. Right. And like anthology horror wasn't big back at that time. And, you know, we already kind of talked about, I don't think we've, we've talked about it like uh, on air, but um, yeah. we've talked about like the misfortunes of, you know, the Halloween franchise with this release and how everybody wanted Michael. And instead they got something completely mm-hmm. different. But I mean, this movie is like grown on, on so many people, uh, including myself. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a great standalone like B movie in, in its own right. You know, like forget. I, I that's the thing too. If you watch it, not thinking about the rest of the franchise, you'll you'll have a lot of fun with this movie. Just like yep. a standalone. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Like like Chase said, like the, <laughs> just like the, the like you think about what's actually happening in this movie. It's like what so the end dark, game man. is. <laughs> it is dark. Like it's so fucking bleak. Like we're just yeah. You wanna, they want to just kill all the children in the world with these Halloween masks or as many children as possible by distributing yeah. these masks. It's it's like really fucked up. Yeah. Um, and that one scene in the lab, dude. Yeah. Really, <laughs> it's so really crazy. fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think Tom Atkins, like he was, you know, he he's he's fantastic in this movie. I mean, he had quite a run in the early eighties, like between this and like, I'm trying to think he was in so many movies. Like the fog was another notable one, like related Mm -hmm. to John Carpenter anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, even the, even the, the robots, like the androids that work for the silver shamrock company are creepy, you know, like the, the guys in the suits, you know, like I always found those guys to be, to be creepy, uh, always freaked me out. But yeah. yeah, good pick, man. Like I said, I it was an honorable mention for me because I don't watch it every year. But and I don't know why I don't because it would mm-hmm. you know I talk about it so much you would think that I would watch it more than I do. Mm-hmm. But 
And you got the poster up, so I figured you would too. Yeah, <laughs> I do. No, dude, I dig it, man. I really do dig yeah. the movie. I mean, well, that poster yeah. was, you know, I got lucky with that, you know, you told me about state that, sale. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I got really lucky with that. So I, I had to snag it, but. Um, yeah. no, I, I wish I, I John Carpenter had his letterbox open and he reviewed Season of the Witch. Oh, dude, <laughs> I went looking for that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I was that so was mad when that sorry. happened, dude. When you told me, you're like, I was like, hey, I can't find it. And you're like, hold on. And it's like, nah, it. No, it was yeah, a whole thing. It was, it was fake. A, yeah. It was fake. It's so, yeah. We can make it. Oh, was it fake? Of, well, okay. We, okay. So the thing is, is John Carpenter, X, Y, and Z, it could have been real. And then he, so he posted a tweet that says, what is letterboxed after all of it, after mm-hmm. it got deleted. The thing is, is like, maybe he mm-hmm. just like, he's like, oops, you got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's his PR way. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, my knows? imagination and the comedian in me wants to just like imagine that know. he was having some good trolls. And, yeah. you know, that's how I'm going to think of it because it made me laugh really hard. And if it's going to make me laugh really man. hard when I, yeah. That made, wasn't like Monday morning or Tuesday. I forgot what it was, but that made my morning. Yeah. For people that are yeah. just absolutely curious, let me just like, I have to. I can't leave <laughs> you guys on a cliffhanger. Like, just, I just wanted it to be real because I was yeah. like, you know, just, just like a Monday and like John Carpenter's smoking weed in his <laughs> California house, just yeah. fucking talking shit about all these movies <laughs> yeah so like um oh, okay i found them so he reviewed okay so halloween 2 let me just read it because these are forever gone off <laughs> the, the internet one, dude. yeah the halloween 2 john carpenter review now let me preface everybody thought this was john carpenter um yeah, no. or not everybody but a lot of people did i did mm-hmm. i just thought it was fucking funny because there are celebrities on letterbox it's not it's not mm-hmm. far-fetched what the fuck mm-hmm. he says is kind of far-fetched mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes um this was watched on september 20th 2024 they paid me more money than i had ever seen to write a sequel to a film that did not need one i took the check and spent it on beers to get me drunk enough to plow through this crap i looked at the final script which took a whopping two days to write and said wow now that's a piece of shit and it was i had fake faith in rick rosenthal and he did not <laughs> oh, i suppose i expected him to be a miracle worker and nobody could have made this work i don't regret hiring him it's just, oh, dude, it's God. great. It's, it's like the same one dude. with Christine where he's like, Stephen King's on fucking crack. You know? <laughs> it's just great. That's crazy. So that oh, was the 10 If it was a troll, if it's fake, they did a great job. They did. As, because as fucking Don Carpenter, because he doesn't give a fuck at all. Exactly. He doesn't give a fuck in real life. And I would, yeah. it, it wouldn't, that's why it's, it's so believable. I wouldn't yeah. second guess that at all, you know, mm-hmm. coming yeah. from him. Well, it's he's so alluded great. to that. He's he's alluded to Halloween 2 being less than, you know, mm-hmm. what everyone expected, including, you know, the studio, you know, and, mm-hmm. and he talked about how much of a pain in the ass it was. He Again, he didn't want to go back and he didn't want to hand in any of it. Yeah. You know, but, yeah. you know, they offered him a paycheck and he's like, yeah, fuck it. I'll do it. You know, if you guys yeah. are going to pay me, then I'll do it. And that that he's always maintained that stance that you know, it's not necessarily a, a great movie. You know, it's, it's just straight up. It's, it's not his movie. I mean, he wrote, he wrote yeah. the script. That's it. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what are we on? Number though. one, number one. I wonder what it is. I'm just like wearing this t-shirt for no reason. I think. <laughs> yeah. But, I figured yeah. you were going to go, they live yeah. or something like maybe the fog. Yeah. yeah maybe e. I love the fog. Is a horror the movie. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exorcist, man. I mean, that's like, there's not much to say about that it, it's mm-hmm. still to me it's still the perfect not just horror movie i will say just in general it's like one of the most perfect movies ever made good mm-hmm. narrative good horror uh, scenes fucking practical yep. effects are amazing it's still spooky today when you show it to people um really really solid movie and we know chase is a big fan of you know buying the steelbook for new be- what was that? believer believer yeah i said beginning oh my god uh, Wait, yeah. what did you no. say did you say beginning and believer i said well i said, said i meant i said both yeah i meant to say believer oh. but who knows maybe yeah. he does have a, a beginning steelbook tucked away Secretly. somewhere <laughs> you'll never see it in a collection <laughs> photo. In, yeah. oh, i think he does i i have exorcist believer here <laughs> <laughs> yes i did buy it um i'm the only person i've seen buy it um Dude, there's there's dude, actually so funny. I don't know why. Dude, there's no you know what way. gets me? Like the first bucks. part does. I know. No, I get no. The first part never makes me laugh. You know what gets me is when, when I you stare look down. Yeah, like, when you're like, I'm the only one who bought it, and he looks down, and he's like, time. "Fuck." 
<laughs> that's what gets me. That was the one cell they needed. Time, Dude, yeah. even 10 bucks. Oh, I remember, like, oh, you yeah. told us, you're like, hey, it's only 10 bucks. And me and Will were still like, fuck that shit. <laughs> no, and I was like, yeah, I got it. it. You're like, I got I, it. Yeah. yeah, you were like, did you really, bro? Did no you really? Way. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because remember, at one point, because you asked me that, like, are you still trying to get every horror movie ever on 4K? Because yeah. at one point, I did have all of those. <laughs> yeah. Then I reeled back so that you were kind of like, hey, you still kind of going uh, for that? And I was like, yeah. 10 bucks. But, my cope publicly to defend myself was it was the last Best Buy Steelbook. That it was, was. A, it was the last. That's true. Steelbook. That's true. Yeah, that yeah. was my cope. But yeah, the original classic. I watch it every Great. Halloween, dude, all yeah. the time. Sometimes more than once, to be honest with you. I'll watch it like once or twice in October, just because I love it that much. So wait, Great. but Chase, I want to challenge you because was it in fact the last Best Buy Steelbook, or was it one of? Was it was it the last release? It could have been. I just. Um, yeah. I think it, it could have was. Been. There could have I'm been one or two more, but I don't think that, so. When did they re- was that in October when it was released? I forget when mm-hmm. they actually That's released it. That's when the movie it. came out, but it was January that the steel was came okay, out. Or it was January. It was late the December, early January, then they had that liquidation sell in February. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, Gabe's over there looking for us. Yeah, I'm looking I'm looking right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, cuz it's I'm interested to know what else was like, cause mm-hmm. like Young Guns, which I have, I bought the Young Guns Steelbook. That was one of the. Oh yeah, the I remember that match. one too. Yeah, but I, I just I don't know what the that. last one was. I can't find it, dude. No one's made a post about it. I mean, there's a, there's a Reddit post about like what was your last Best Buy Steelbook. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's John was John Wick was John Wick four. No, Wick that came out was summer. summer. Mm-hmm. Did it? No, that, oh, okay, yeah, it was yeah, summer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting I, to go back. I think and look it might have been Exorcist, though. I remember, like, that was the only. It was. Young Guns I remember was him 5th. bringing it up, and I was like, should I pull the trigger just because it's the last one and it's going to be, like, worth mm. something? But then I was like, okay. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, no. Will. So December 19th for Exorcist, December 5th for Young Guns. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. Exorcist was yeah. the last one. Damn. Damn. That's crazy, bro. It's a relic. Hey, man. Man. It's, it's history right there. You know, it's. <laughs> It smells it's like a, it's Best Buy. Yeah. It smells, smells like disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, number oh, one man. Exorcist classic. Great one. Will I think yeah. I think it's you, man. Number You're one. Ending us out. Send us out. Yeah. The bank, I mean, man. you guys know where I'm good. Chase. Well, no, Chase. No you idea. Just did, you... Hello Kitty Island Adventure. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not quite. That's his encore. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's Halloween. Possible. It's Halloween. Of course, man. Oh, yeah. Of course. I could not because, like, it's, I watch it every year on mm-hmm. October 31st, no matter what I'm doing, even if I'm working, I have it with me. You know, I got my little, I don't have the 4K, but I take my DVD with my little portable DVD player and I, I watch awesome. it um, every year because, I mean, it, this all started way back in the day with like AMC. They used to do the Fear Fest, which I'm sure they still do. I don't have cable yeah. anymore. So I wouldn't know, but I'm sure they still do it. But, um yeah halloween like we used to watch all the halloween movies i would watch in fact i should have mentioned this with honorable mentions because four halloween four was going to be in my honorable Mm. mentions because i don't watch it every year but sometimes i do because i really like the opening of that film not to go off on a tangent on that but thinking about it now um but yeah halloween again just the atmosphere in this movie just the vibe of it uh, the fact that it's such Perfect a simple Halloween. concept just executed, you know, mm-hmm. so well. And again, by no means a perfect movie, but it's, uh, you know, I've kind of talked about it. I think I talked about it in the Discord when we, we had a contest one time for a giveaway. Um, and I forget what exactly it was, but it was like whatever movie was, it was like your favorite horror movie or something like that and why it's your favorite horror movie. But Halloween is the movie that got me into filmmaking. You know, when I first saw it as a kid, it just resonated with me. It stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then when I got older, you know, when I was like getting into high school and uh, started to develop more of an interest in film um, as a medium and all that, it was just watching it again. It just the fact that it was made on a shoestring budget, I mean, 300,000 at the time or whatever it was. Hmm. uh, I just loved everything about it, you know, and it kind of just for me growing up kind of embodied like and we used to get together like me and my friends at the time like gabe it kind of struck a chord with me too because you were talking about scream right when you were growing up and like seeing scream and like we kind of had the same idea like me and my friends group right like we would uh we would all get together around halloween and like try to you know 
one one of us like took our parents camcorder and like tried to like one thing figuring it out how to work it right but then <laughs> just having everybody get together and like trying to make like just this stupid like low budget like, yeah our film which is pretty much free because none of us had any mm -hmm. money you know? so we were just mm -hmm. trying to do what we could and, like get props and costumes together and you know i remember doing one with like scream or ghost face and uh michael and then somebody was jason you know it was it was just fun but like halloween was like just one of those movies that to this day is like the reason why i am like who i am as a person mm -hmm. you know it just kind of shaped me in in so many ways that would i would never expect so yeah i mean i watch it every year but and i think the first time i saw this movie i was probably like five or six years old so mm. i was very young uh it scared the shit out of me like the whole scene in the closet and that's obviously an iconic scene but i i was just so terrified it was this one and halloween four because in halloween four a lot of people make fun of that mask because that's when everything the mask started yeah. getting but I always thought the Halloween four mask was kind of creepy. Like there was just something about it that just, it was just creepy. At least when I was younger, you know, so the one where you can see his eyes. No, not in four. Oh, okay. That's later. Okay. Yeah. That's it's Halloween five, which I refuse to talk about <laughs> Halloween five where uh, pure evil fucking cries. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but no Halloween, that's my number one pick, you know? Yeah. Dude. Uh, and again, it's, it's going to be in a lot of people's top 10 list. Oh, top for sure. Five list, but I was going to put an honorable mention because I, I was like, Will's going to talk about Halloween for sure. I was yeah, like, I don't even yeah. know. No, it's, <laughs> it's the one movie that I yeah. always try to watch every year. And like you guys know me, I've talked about how much I love, you know, I don't necessarily think Halloween is the best franchise. I've, I've made that very clear. Mm -hmm. I think as a mm -hmm. franchise, it has suffered a lot of, uh, ups and downs you know compared to mm -hmm. other franchises I've, I've made myself uh pretty clear on that but as far as the the og like the original film i, I think it's fantastic so it you know would always have a special about? place in my heart so i'm surprised you didn't bring up the thing man and your honorable mentions are in that file. well so the thing yeah well here's the i thing. know they're like mm -hmm. this for you here's the yeah. thing with the thing okay here's the thing with the thing the it's like a thing christmas movie is <laughs> no yeah the thing i actually i don't even watch it around christmas i like, cause it's funny because you guys were talking about The Shining uh, towards yeah. the beginning of the episode. I don't watch those movies around Halloween. I don't. Yeah. Mm. I never have, and it's just. I think it's just because I'm. I'm one of those people. Like, I always try to associate movies with like a time of year because I just feel like I, I always try to mesh with the vibe. You know that they yeah, give yeah, off, yeah. and and as far as the setting as well, I just think The Shining is like the perfect movie to watch. Like I, I think last year we went snowboarding, a couple of buddies of mine and, and myself, and we we were up there, and I brought it with me, and we watched it. You know, it was a TV up there in the cabin. We just watched it up there because you know we weren't snowed in or anything, but it was, you know, we're up in New Hampshire in the middle of January. It's like yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna watch The Shining. I mean, mm -hmm. that to me is, is like I just watch it in the winter time. The same thing with the thing. I watch it usually in like December. Um, not necessarily because of Christmas, but I mean, I'll watch it in December or January if I have the chance, usually January, you know? So I just, yeah. I just like watching those movies that time of year. Cause again, it's just, you're nice and cozy. You're inside, mm -hmm. you know, it's cold out, you get nice and warm, you know, you make yourself a, you know, cup of hot chocolate or whatever the case may be. And you just settle in and just watch it. I just, I love that, you know? So that to me is like, uh, I guess we can call it like winter horror you know yeah for lack of a better something word. about I the just, snow man it's like i don't know what I mean. it is whether the shining or the thing it's like yeah something about the snow that yeah you watch that when it's cold outside and yeah yeah I yeah I, it's it is weird like and can people have said that to me too they're like you don't watch the thing in like for halloween i'm like nah I, I, it's not that i don't yeah. love it obviously i love the movie but and it's not to say that i haven't watched it in october because there's been years where you know it's it's been on there but uh, mm -hmm. on the watch list but um yeah lately like the last several years i haven't watched it in october it's always been january february hell yeah yeah it's a great time so that makes a lot of sense man and i should go i should list. i should say that too like january and february i, always, I tend to watch more like sci-fi oriented horror films Same. during mm -hmm. that time of year so for some reason the, in the thing kind of falls in with that and that's just kind of been my routine for the last few years so I, I guess it just it falls in line with that so that's it cool 
that's yeah, our top that's five nice. guys so like yeah, i said that's just our top five to get us in the halloween spirit it's october we're excited we're gonna bring you a lot of guys uh some like horror content throughout the month uh we got a community base episode coming up which we're excited about as well so mm. uh look forward to that and as always we will catch you guys on the next one later everybody <laughs> yeah we're all waiting for it and will's like straight no, I, I was like no i'm like, not gonna do it bro Thank <laughs> you.